Hello and welcome. Today I'm gonna take this raw file of this guy on an escalator in the London Underground and I'm gonna turn it into a very dramatic, very dark and old school vintage kind of looking black and white picture just like this while of course explaining every single step I do from start to finish. Just on a quick note, you might want to speed up the video because I speak relatively slow in it, especially towards the end. This was really just a snapshot and I didn't think much of it, but once I looked back at it on the computer, I saw this very interesting expression on his face as well as this kind of repeating patterns all over the picture from the ads in the background, from these lamps and as well these uh, lines kind of leading you not into the picture but through the picture from left to right, which I think is quite interesting as well. The only thing that I don't like is the color, it doesn't really add to it and I'm definitely going to go black and white just for the sake of making everything more dark, dramatic and kind of more vintage looking, but as I go here into black and white you see the lighting just pops out a lot more because you don't have any color that distracts you from the lighting. So if I go back here into the color, you don't really notice the whole lighting scheme nearly as much as in black and white. And this is actually the main thing that I want to pay attention to. I really want to complexify and play around with the lighting rather than the overall look so much. But uh, before I do any of the lighting, I'm still going to adjust just some of these basics and tonal curve adjustments to get kind of an overall rough good starting point. Alright, so first thing I'm gonna do is actually raise the shadows so I can bring the contrast to the right and bring down the blacks without losing too much of the shadow detail. And that way you really get a lot of uh, darkness, a lot of dramatic look, while not really once again losing too much of the shadow detail. Whereas I would go into the zero shadows, you see everything becomes just a bit too dark to mesh together and there's not really any differentiation in between a lot of these parts of the photo. So really great thing to do, raise the shadows so you can bring the contrast further to the right and bring the blacks further down. Then I'm just gonna bring up the whites a little bit to get some more differentiation from light to dark. In terms of the highlights, I don't really think I'm gonna adjust anything here because that's really too much. Instead I'm going to go go down to the tonal curve and adjust the highlight slider here. The highlight slider in the tonal curve really just affects the very bright parts of the photo. So in this case these lamps which really give even more dynamic. So very different than the highlight slider up here. But overall exposure I think it's pretty much fine if I go to um, into the minus here it's too dark. So I'm just gonna leave that at zero. Clarity I mean Hmm, I'm definitely gonna go into the plus, but I also don't want to overdo that. Just around 30 works pretty well here. And is there anything else? Not really in the basics adjustments. Let's go down to the tonal curve and just see what the other sliders do here. There's really nothing I can tell you about them. Uh, just go into the minus and plus and at the end stick with whatever you look like best. It's very, very different on every single picture, but uh, usually they don't really have that big of an impact and point curve just affects the very small the very detailed textures and contrast of your image which uh, oftentimes is a bit too much so in this case also I think I'm just gonna leave it at linear so as I said before, I don't really want to uh, pay too much attention on the global adjustments. I really want to pay special attention to the lighting and the uh, uh, complexification of the lighting. So I think I'm not going to adjust any of these tools here, except for maybe the effects, because I do want to add some global vignetting here. So I'm just going to bring down the amount right here. I don't want to make this too much either, but Vignetting is really a great thing to make your picture look a lot darker, a lot more nostalgic, but also give more attention towards the center. So I think that looks pretty well. Of course, there are a lot of other tools that you could take advantage of, but especially in black and white, it doesn't really matter that much. And as you see here, we have actually quite a bit of noise, um, but I really actually like the look in black and white because it gives sort of a character 
and if I would go into the noise reduction, I, you really lose a lot of detail, but you also lose that kind of character, so especially in black and white, which really not suggest you to bring up the noise reduction unless you have an extremely noisy picture. So anyways, let's go here into the local adjustments and the first thing I'm gonna do is grab a graduated filter over this left part, make a very soft edge so all of the adjustments look very natural and then just go into the minus exposure and that way we really create even more dramaticness and make even more differentiation, kind of give more attention towards the center and I'm actually gonna do the same thing with the right, although I'm definitely not gonna go too far here but just a little bit really kind of um, how should I say it almost traps this guy in between the picture in the middle of the picture which I think works really well it gives even more of a dramatic look but uh, I'm gonna even exaggerate that more by grabbing an adjustment brush and going into the minus exposure and just adding some additional vignetting on just some very small parts I might have gone a bit too far here but I just want to make some stuff even darker and then I'm gonna grab an adjustment brush go into the minus exposure to add even more vignetting over just some parts that are still a bit too bright I think over the right here works really really well as well on the top right here and I don't really want to make these uh, or I don't really want to have any detail in this ceiling at least not too much maybe I have to grab another adjustment brush just to go over this part because I still want just a hint of detail so it doesn't look completely black but at the same time I really don't want it to stand out and to distract from the actual person in the picture then I am definitely I think these lights look very distracting now you could try to grab an adjustment brush just go way into the minus exposure and paint over it or you could grab a spot removal tool and try to get rid of them that way I'm just gonna grab another adjustment brush real quick and get rid of them and yeah I think the picture already looks a lot cleaner and a lot more dramatic so here would be before any adjustment brushes and here is after even more dramatic then in terms of the lighting now I, I really think I'm gonna add some dodge and burning here which means making individual parts darker or brighter and I really love to add uh, rail filters for that because you can set the feather to a hundred which gives you a very very soft edge so as you see and um, before I add anything actually look just look at the picture and look where the light is coming from and what can you complexify without making it look unnatural so here you have a light just shining and you have another light of course but in between there should be a bit more darkness so I'm just gonna grab a rail filter and go in between those two uh, lights and go into the minus exposure now it's very tricky sometimes because you have to angle it correctly so it all looks natural and of course you cannot really overdo it with the amount either but I think that works really well you know you don't have to go super dark with it even just a little bit of shade works quite a lot of the times then I'm gonna right click duplicate and kind of do the same thing with the rest of these uh, gaps in between the lights although of course much smaller and I'm gonna right click duplicate another one over here really go um, not quite as far into the minus exposure right click duplicate and another one over there and I think that works really well it makes everything even darker and I think it really looks natural at the end maybe I'm just gonna adjust this one but here is before these rail filters and here is after but at the same time I think I'm gonna grab some plus exposure rail filters now and just go where the light is actually hitting so uh, pretty much in between those negative exposure adjustment filters so right click duplicate once again make sure that everything looks nice and natural and you know I know this is a very specific picture to do something like that on but you can use 
star trump burning i personally i use star trump burning in almost all of my pictures so let me show you once again the progress here before any real filters and here is after and i think it definitely looks very good but i'm gonna add some additional minus exposure rail filters over just some of these ads here in the background because they're just a bit too bright a bit too distracting at least some of them so let me just do that real quick right click duplicate really amazing how fast you can work with these rail filters while really having full control over every single one of them and maybe a last one over here everything in the background isn't really as noticeable but yeah i do like it is there anything else i want to do before i add a plus exposure filter on the guy itself maybe i'm just gonna grab another minus exposure one over this kind of thing right here just to give a bit less exposure and a bit less extension to that thing and then I'm going to add a plus exposure rail filter, a very big one. By the way, uh, the feather here at 100, if I go way into the minus exposure, you see it really just affects the middle uh, at most because there's such a soft edge. So you don't really have to worry if you spill over some of the actual parts that you just want to adjust, if that makes any sense. But anyways, I'm going to go into the plus exposure here to really give more attention to the actual person which is of course the main attraction the main interest point of this photo so let me just fine-tune that maybe even go a bit farther into the plus exposure and hmm, maybe it's a bit too hard so let me try to go down into the clarity and i think it does work so before that one rail filter and here is after it really just gives kind of a spotlight on the actual person gives a lot more attention to him while not making it look unnatural or breaking the lighting scheme so then, hmm, let me zoom in one to one here, and this is a very noisy picture as I as you've seen before because I shot this at ISO 1600 and I've raised the shadow so much and I've overall adjusted the picture a lot, but once again really don't mind it. The only thing that I think of is to grab an adjustment brush here, go into the minus exposure and just make this right side even darker so you have even a more distinct uh, variation from left to right and also do the same thing on his face. So uh, this is a very tricky thing, you can easily make it look completely uh, overdone like this, but if you don't do it too much, I think it can actually work and it definitely does here. Let's see here, I think I am done, but a thing that I really like to do is just take a second and take a last glimpse at the picture before I finally decide if I am done. And hmm, uh, I think I'm gonna grab an adjustment brush here and just make these front parts where there's kind of too much light even darker so they're kind of less distracting. And I'm also gonna grab a rail filter, a very very big one, a very long one, and just angle it like this. So to just make the top of these ads here a bit darker. So I think that works actually even better and even more attention to the actual person. Then let's go here into the history and see where we started at with the raw file right here. And this is the raw file converted into black and white. And this is the picture at the end. A very dark, a very dramatic adjustment. Definitely a lot more than I usually do, even in black and white pictures. But I think it just worked best for this particular photo. And also, even if you don't want to go as dark, Dark, as dramatic as I've done here, I still think you're gonna be able to use some of these techniques about vignetting and especially uh, complexifying the light and adding light with the rail filters to really bring your pictures to the next level and to get this kind of mysterious dark dramatic look and mood. Thank you very much for watching, make sure you subscribe if you haven't done so already, I upload multiple videos every single week about Lightroom, landscape editing colorful sunset edits, other black and white edits, and all sorts of photography related videos. I'm gonna sign out here, thank you very much for watching, have a great day, and of course as always, take care.